or stuff like this. There was uh, uh, there also a hadith. The, I forgot the name of the Sahaba. What was the name of the Sahaba? It is in Tirmidhi and also in Abu Dawood and also in Muslim of Ahmad. I forgot to write the name of the Sahabi. That he said that once Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was in his house and outside the house there were some Sahaba who were arguing about Qadr, who were discussing about Qadr, having debate about Qadr, Taqdeer, pre-decree. So when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam came out. The Sahabi said that the face of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam became red with anger. It was as if, you know, nar, nar, pomegranate. He said that it was as if the seeds of the nar. It was so red. So then Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "What are you doing? Why are you striking the Quran with the Quran?" Meaning. Th that person was saying, no, this is the one of the Quran. It said, the other was saying, no, no, this is the one of the Quran. And they were striking the Quran with each other. Because remember, our belief is that the Quran will never have confusion. It will never strike with each other. There will never be a difference in the Quran. What, what do we mean by this? It will be a straight message. It is not possible that in one place the Quran says this, but in the other place the Quran says something else. No. It cannot be like this. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Do not strike the Quran with the Quran, and do not argue about Qadr, because the people, the nation before you were destroyed because of this, because they were arguing about Qadr." And the Sahabi he said, "Wallahi, I have never been so happy about myself as I was at that time, because I was not among those people who were arguing. I was sitting aside." And in one hadith, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Why don't you be like them who are sitting over there and not arguing about Qadr? So that is why the Sahabi said, I was very happy that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave me an example. Because I was sitting with a group who, were not, who was not arguing about Qadr. So this is why the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that, uh, do not strike Quran with the Quran. The question number, or the point number seven, was, the truth about Qadr. What is the truth about Qadr? Remember this, there is only one sentence that if a Muslim understands that single sentence, he will understand what is Qadr. What is the sentence? Whatever reaches you of the good or the bad. Whatever reaches you of the good or of the bad. You could never have been safe from it. Meaning you could never divert it. You could never miss it. It will come to you. And whatever of the good or the bad, it did not fall on you. But you missed it. It was never meant to be fall on you or it was never meant to reach you. This is one sentence which a person understands, he will understand what is Qadr. The true belief in Qadr. He will understand that. I will repeat the sentence once again. Whatever good or bad falls on you, you were never meant to miss it. And whatever good or bad you miss, it was never meant to fall on you. One sing single and simple sentence to explain Qadr. Number eight, which is our main topic for today. The question was that how many people were divided among the Ahl Qibla. How many groups came into existence from the Ahl Qibla among the Qadr? There were three. Ahl Qibla divided among three groups regarding the Qadr. The first group was Jabariya. What was their Qidr or what is their belief? They say a human being has no free will. From the day he's born till the day he die, he has no free will. He is forced to be like that. Meaning, in other sentence, they say, there is no difference between a wall and there is no difference between a human being. Because the wall has no choice. You make it, you build it, it's there. So human being also has no choice. They say, the Jabariya, they say human being has no choice. You are as you are because Allah created you, Allah is making you, Allah, uh, and Allah is making you do this. So khalas, you have no choice. You have no free will. And they give an example that human being is like a leaf that when the wind comes 
and the leaf goes because of the wind human being is like that the leaf has no choice it it will go with the wind so similar is a human being that they say human being has no choice it will go with the qadr this is what they say now remember <coughs> the founder of this belief is jaham bin safwan he is the founder of this and he is also referred uh, his group is also referred as jahamiya now this person la hawla wala quwwata illa billah he brought four big issues in the ummah four big problems not for the fiqh of the aqeedah he brought four problems in the muslim ummah subhanallah what <coughs> what are the <coughs> what are those <coughs> we will talk about it in order to understand much more clearly about the denial of qadr and about the people who have the opinions in qadr in order to understand we will talk about that but let us look at his sanad his teachers in other sense the teacher of jahan bin safwan was al jahad bin jurhum al jahad bin jurhum was his teacher the teacher of al jahad bin jurhum was bayan bin sam'an the teacher of bayan bin sam'an was talut and the teacher of talut was lubai uh, lubai bin ahsam look at the sanad from where is the sanad coming lubai bin uh, ahsam is a jew he is a jewish he is a yahud and he is the one who did magic on prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the hadith is in bukhari his student talut he was a nephew of uh, this person lubai he was also a jew bayan bin sam'an about him the ulama have said he is dal he is a misguided person and he is the chief of the ahli bid'ah he is the founder of the ahli bid'ah this is what is said about now look at his his teachers now the billah then al jahad bin jurhum he is also the founder of this uh, some of the beliefs of the inverted sects and then the person himself so look at the person himself and look at his teachers teachers are misguided as well teacher are also from the ahli bid'ah teacher are from the jews from the ahli kitab none of them is a mu'min none of them is a good muslim so we will see that what were the four problems that he bring a, a group of people I mean a, a group of uh, majusi you know majusi the people who worship the fire al majus they are known as al uh, majusi they worship the fire so some of the maju some of the christians and some other people they came to this person jahan bin safwan they asked him we worship the fire we see the fire we feel the fire the christians they worship the cross they see the cross they feel the cross the people of idolaters they worship the idols what they uh, which they have made sanam so they can see the idols they can feel the idol. who do you worship and what do you worship he said we worship allah so he said where is allah show us or make us feel allah so jahan bin safwan what he did he went to his house he locked himself for 40 days remember now remember what should a muslim do when he has such questions do not run your brain no rather refer to the ulama refer to the scholars in the first place do not argue with the people of innovation because they will create doubts in your mind so do not argue with them do not speak with them but if by chance you got some questions from them refer to the ulama refer to the scholars and ask them that i have been asked uh, such and such a question give me the answer do not try to run your own horses do not try to run your own brain because we cannot we have not enough knowledge for such incidents so he closed himself after 40 days he came out and since he had no answer he said our rabb has no name and no attribute we worship a rabb without any names and attributes why so this is the first problem that he brought the first problem was he denied rejected the names and attributes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he denied the tawhid asma sifat and remember this thing why did he say this he said because you worship the fire fire has a name what is the name fire it has an attribute what burning the uh, christians they worship the cross cross has a name cross it has an attribute it it is made from stone or whatever thing they made it from the people of idolaters they worship the idols it has a name lat uzza or uh, so many names that people have made manat and even today there are na names of idols what is the attribute it's made from stone so our